As a philosopher and a chess aficionado, I have always been very passionate about the metaphysics of chess, that is, the philosophical foundations of the game. That is why in this two-part video, I have brought on the one hand a chess grandmaster and on the other hand a lawyer, a specialist in intellectual property and copyright. So we will be discussing things like what is an abstract object such as a mathematical formula or a chess game? And also, how can two people play a chess game without a board? Hmm? What is the object that they are playing with? And also, can this object be copyrighted? This and much more we will discuss in this conversation. Welcome! Hello everyone! Welcome back to Chihon Teaches. And today, as you can see, I am in company of two people. Why, you would say? Well, first of all, let's introduce our guests and I'll tell you why they're with me today. So, sir, who are you? Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Ishwar. I am a law student. I'm doing my master's. I'm here because, well, Chihon invited me and I was honored to be here and I didn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot say no. I cannot say no. I'm peer pressure, you know. <laughs> yes. Who yes. Are you? So, so my name is uh, Jordan. I'm from Netherlands. Um, I play chess. Actually, I'm a chess grandmaster. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as Chihon invited me to, you know, uh, appear on his channel, I I had to accept. So uh, <laughs> sounds like I threatened you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. like, <laughs> so uh, I'm really interested in uh, also having this conversation because um, I think there's going to be a lot of topics that uh, you know we'll uh, be able to learn from all as all three of us. So it's going to be exciting. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. Uh, let's get to the point now. Um, I have been making videos on what I call a series on Platonism, right? So I have a series, an introduction to Plato. I will leave you the links. Uh, there are like pop-ups and also in the description. Um, and also discussion between Plato, the person, the philosopher, and Platonism as a philosophical position. So in a nutshell, just for this conversation, Platonism would be a position that claims that there are abstract things, let's say, abstract objects that exist in their own right. So, for instance, uh, the number two. I uh, can walk on the street and never trip, you know, with a number two, like, oh, I found a number two on the street. No, we, we may, you know, write a symbol or a symbol, depending on uh, language or uh, whatever system you use, to refer to the number two. But the number two is an object that is outside space and time that is um, eternal in a way. It, it doesn't corrupt, as the philosophers would say, it doesn't change. The two is two. And we have access to it through our intellection of it. Mm -hmm. So in this series, we've been talking about, yeah, very formally, very philosophically, but I'm very keen on having a different perspective on this. So we have a professional chess player. We have a law student, as you, as you claim yes. yourself uh, to be. Um, but who's specializing in, 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 in copyright and, yes. and, and things like that. So um, I would like to start with you, Ishwar, in, in the sense of, okay, uh, are there any things um, in the world, <laughs> in the practical world, let's say, now, in the world we live in, that may be considered uh, as real, but they're not physical? Well, I guess there are a lot of things you could say that. Okay. Any uh, mathematical formulas, a lot of things. So what, what what the mathematical formula is about? Like, uh, for instance, if I if I develop one, can I yeah, uh, claim it's mine or? Uh, for example, two plus two is equal to four. Mm -hmm. You can observe that somehow, yeah. now, but there are layers to it. You can reach a point where it is so small or where it is so big that it's impossible to actually evaluate it. You can't see it, but you know it exists. For example, like electrons, atoms, and mm -hmm. stuff like that, like scientific stuff. It might be boring, yeah. but... No, 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 don't worry. We're here for this. Yeah, but you know content. that they exist, but do you actually, can you see them? Can you observe them? Mm. I think I once saw a video of uh, Richard Feynman and... Um, uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Our favorite he of got a uh, yes. interview, a question from an interviewer, like, what is magnetism or something like that? And um, he was like, well, that's a really hard question because um, you can... You know, you, there's always layers to everything, so you cannot just say what it is because, I mean, if you're gonna explain what is magnetism, you you have to you know explain how maybe electrons work, how neutrons work, how atoms work, and then you can go even deeper and deeper. So it's always there's always layers to everything, I guess. Yeah. Um, or uh, yeah. 
but we still refer to these things. So, for instance, we say electron, and we have a common understanding with different levels of, um, let's say, uh, depth, let's say, of, of uh, what an electron may be, but we are taught electrons are a thing, right? Uh, this another you mentioned Feynman. Um, he has uh, I quoted this part of, of Feynman. Like uh, I, I'm doing philosophy, but I quoted this physicist. Uh, he has a, an anecdote with philosophers discussing whether the inside of a brick exists. <laughs> <laughs> like what is the inside of a brick? And then mm -hmm. people were discussing this. And then okay, you, Mr. Physicist, uh, what do you think the inside uh, of a brick? And then he goes into this electron. Well, the inside uh, of it is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You would think it's like the same as kind of the outside of a brick. Now it's yeah. all made right. of the same material, I would assume. <laughs> um, the yeah. same, yeah, particles and electrons making up that material. Or, yeah. Uh, or atoms, I should say. Yeah. yeah. So it's very interesting what you say now, Ishwar, because um, in Plato's account of the world, um, you know, the Greeks had the four elements, you know, earth, yeah. air, water, fire. And those, those were like what the atoms are for us now, sort of. It's not the same, but uh, just for the sake of the example. Uh, so muscles have more fire than other stuff, like more of these ingredients. They, the mixture of these four elements creates all the material things. But for Plato, he would say that the underlying foundation of these elements uh, were mathematical objects. So triangles, triangles mostly. Triangles mostly. So when you check at quantum physics nowadays, uh, the underlying reality of it would be uh, mathematical structures. That's what's claimed and, and that's why we have these concepts that of course you haven't seen an electron in your life. Like, have you? No. no. Uh, what? Have you <laughs> seen an electron in your life? Like, No, no, no. And now, nowadays they go even deeper now. There's this uh, string theory kind of thing where they yeah, try yeah, to... Uh, quarks, strings... Yes, yes, yes. To explain even more in depth what the world is made of, you know, because yeah. it can go even even smaller, I guess. Yes. So, so we are not experts on physics, but uh, still we, we have heard of these concepts and we can acknowledge that, okay, there must be something, right? But yes. uh, why cannot I claim Ishwar, that a mathematical formula is mine? Imagine I created it, if I you, well, using that word is misleading maybe. But. So basically you're not inventing it, you're discovering it. So you're not- That's how the law takes it. Yes, because uh, they are, it's a universal truth. For example, mm -hmm. to say that the sun is uh, shining and the sun is this much distance from the earth, it's a universal truth. And if you make a formula, a mathematical formula, for example, let's say Einstein's equation, like E is equal to mc squared, mm -hmm. the, the purpose it does, it explains the state of things. That yeah. cannot be afforded copyright or uh, any pro legal protection like that because it is not an invention. Einstein discovered it. It's uh -huh. Because it's already true. Exactly. Uh -huh. And that's, oh. in music, they also say this in music. Uh, Mozart discovered. He did not oh, invent. Really? Yeah. But, but, but wow, Mozart, you, know that. That you would say that's not, there's no truth to music, no? Like a mathematical formula that is the way it is, but music is just about creativity. Don't yes. you think? So the same a thing can be no? said about chess then. Yes. But chess is not in, uh, it, it, it is a game. Yeah, well, chess you are kind of using the, um, you're playing, you know, within the boundaries of the rules and the rules have been set, I don't know, thousands of years Yes. Yes. Ago, in yeah. my opinion, or yeah. not in my opinion, I I think so at least as far as I know. And maybe I think some uh, Arab country. But the the, the last modification, you know. the, the last modification to the rules was the I think the Onpasan rule, really? five hundred years ago. It was okay. it was already in Spain. I think I, I'm but struggling I, to remember. But for certain, it changed from a visa to a queen because of Elizabeth. Um, I know Isabel la Católica in Spanish. I forgot her name in in English now, but. Uh, Spanish Queen. Uh -huh. uh, nice. Oh, but, but only 500 years ago, yeah? I thought uh, it was Around that. Yeah. I will check, I'll put it on the description, I promise. Uh, to, I, I cannot recall now the, the, the precise date, but, um, but that's not a modification to the rules. Mm -hmm. It's a modification to uh, one piece in particular. But the piece is just, just about the same things. Okay. There was also this old Indian way of castling, I remember, in the Chaturanga, which like the king kind of jumps like a knight for once <laughs> per game. Um, and I'm not aware of that. Yeah, well, <laughs> you I should have told you before. Yeah. <laughs> you should have. No, 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 sorry. I, could, I couldn't That's foresee that I would remember this. So. <laughs> um, no, but to me, there, mm. it seems there will be a big distinction between like a mathematical formula or whatever, um, a physical, uh, like, um, like E is equal to MC squared or to Beethoven's, um, I don't know, uh, 
uh, one of his symphonies, um, there, there seems to be a big difference, no? Because one is true and the other one is, I don't know, it's just open to the uh, interpretation of the uh, mm. compo composer. It's a, it's what is the music? It's interesting. Then, so, so you, you claim that truth would, would be like, it's a universal truth. And that's yes. why we cannot copyright it, right? But wha what happens with music then? No, music, it's a different because the same thing, a chess game cannot be copyrighted for E4, E5, like... Uh, as, <laughs> too no, many. No. It, yeah, I'm sorry, too many. It cannot be copyrighted, the, uh, the game itself. But you can write a book about it, but that can be copyrighted. For example, uh, Fisher's uh, 60 Games, that book. That book is definitely copyrighted because he spent time and the creative effort into thinking which of my 60 games should go in this book, in which order. So mm -hmm. that involves a creative element. And the commentary. If there's yeah, the thing. commentary. And it's even in chess-based uh, software, the software is patented, I think. The games are not copyrighted, but the annotations, the stories, they are copyrighted. So as I understand, there needs to be an element of creativity to copyright yes. something. Uh, it needs to be mm -hmm. out of the ordinary kind of... Um, Yes, so intellectual, all of these intellectual property rights, it's uh, the core essence of it is to, it's called incentivizing innovation. It's recognizing your creativity and innovation. So patents, copyright, everything, it's for that. So that your creativity is not abused by others in the market. Uh, but if creativity is the main thing, then why not music? Because I would recognize music as a creative endeavor, right? No, yes, yes. What I meant by discover is not yeah. that it will not be afforded any protection at all. No, mm -hmm. that's not what I meant. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, they, use, they use the word discover for a lot of things. Hmm. In law, you mean? Not in law, oh, no, not no. in law, in general. Okay, not okay, in, not okay. in law. I'm, I was not even talking about law. No, no, yeah. <laughs> just trying to, because I also like trying to yeah. see where the conversation is going. I, I was more, uh, I was leaning towards the philosophical side. Right. Because, can, can you claim that someone invented music? You can invent a musical instrument. But can you invent music, the sound that mm. comes out of that instrument? Mm -hmm. so that's more that's, of a discovery. Uh, that's a difficult question, yeah. 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 That yeah. is what I was thinking. I mm -hmm. wasn't thinking about copyright. Yeah. yeah. Well, th this sounds a lot with... The, well, I do ancient philosophy, as you know. So, um, the Pythagoreans would be would see this um, very you know, extreme link between mathematics, numbers and, and music. Mm. And the proportions is something that's given by the mathematics, right? And the proportions happen to be something that works in music like we have one octave or whatever jargon in, in fractions you know mm. and um the fractions are uh, regular let's say and, and and the more you play with them you can see these patterns following and um and the music you know becoming uh, out or from uh, mm. these proportions so it's very very interesting so um so jordan i wanted to ask you um, yeah. As a, as an introduction, let's say, what the main philosophical question tends to be, what is X? And I have said this in, in, in previous videos. So, what is something is the first thing that allows us to uh, start discussing about that something, yeah. right? So, for instance, uh, I was <laughs> off camera, I was using this example like, um, this person is beautiful. Uh, yeah, well, we, we understand that sentence, but then right. we may ask, okay, but who's this person? Because yeah. <laughs> we may not agree <laughs> if the person is beautiful or not, unless we know who the person is, or what the object is in this case. Yeah. Uh, so, um, it's a very broad question, I know, but take it as, as freely as you want. What is a chess game? How do you, how do you see it? Yeah, um, well, to me, a chess game is um, um, a game played on the chess board within the rules of the game of chess, which as we discussed have been established um, at least 500 years ago, mm -hmm. um, the last rule change, and then there have to be two players involved um, until, well actually until the uh, the end of the game is reached, and that can uh, occur in several ways. There can be a checkmate on the board, there can be, um, the game can end in a draw because there's two bear kings, or even the game can be resigned or a draw can be offered and then the game is over. Then I would say that from the beginning of the chess position until the end of the game, um, that's what defines the chess game. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that's at least how it would be, uh, would be to me. But mm -hmm. It's very interesting because, uh, the okay, you know that Socrates, I, I told you earlier, like Socrates was always very insistent on this what is sex question. Yes, and he got killed for it. You know, so <laughs> I will not go that far. Yes. I, I don't want you to, to hate me after, <laughs> after this video. 
Um, but the first term that called my attention is that, okay, the board, you mentioned the board, right? Um, must it be a physical board? Because right. uh, I am aware, and maybe some people who are watching this are also aware, that you can play blindfold chess. Yes, yes, I actually like to do so uh, myself, yeah, play yeah, blindfold me, chess. Me too, I play even worse in <laughs> blindfolded, yeah. but no, it So, happens. yeah, you can really, um, you know, uh, get very nuanced or, mm -hmm. uh, with this stuff, but um, as long as I think, yeah, the, the chess board is there, maybe not even in a physical way, but mm -hmm. um, um, like it's imaginary or... Um, it's there in your head. It's there in your head, yeah, I don't know. But it's also the in the head of the other person. The, like if we played the, now. Uh, well, actually, a chess game can also just be... I can play a chess game with myself, right? Yes. So there doesn't necessarily maybe need to be an opponent. There just needs to be a sequence of moves which are played somewhere and maybe not even on a piece of paper on a physical board they can yeah. be played in your mind but it has to be within the constraints of the rules of chess of at course, least yes um, but uh, yeah for sure um, there doesn't necessarily need to be a chess board exactly so at least not a physical one so yeah yeah I mean in order for it to be chess still yes it needs to abide by the rules but how would you know I mean you can ask this what is X about anything, right? For yes. example, this camera, what we're recording it, what is yes. what is the camera, how would you... <laughs> Define it. Right? Yeah, yeah. How well, would... well, with those questions, you can tell already why why Socrates would execute it. Yeah, because yeah, if you start get, out... It gets really complicated. <laughs> like, yeah. if we start thinking this way, everyone's mind yeah. just gets... After a point, people we just started to get pissed off, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we need to, you know, because we need to have some... Uh, order and logic in our lives, you know, otherwise yeah. we'll, we'll all go nuts. <laughs> yeah, and, to ha and also to, to, to have some progress in discussions. Like if yes. you keep on pressing on the definitions, you're, you're missing the points. Sometimes. Right, right. Um, we need to have some set definitions and uh, that's just what we... Yeah, yeah but uh, this intuition, if I had to, you know, um, do a cosplay of a very platonistic guy, kind of guy, uh, I would say like, yes, you don't need, you know, your you're a physical board to play chess. That thing that you're seeing in your mind is actually an objective chess game. Because imagine we play a, a game um, uh, blindfolded, both of us. Mm -hmm. Just like, okay, E4, whatever, E5. Um, and we continue, then we finish the game. We can annotate it, right? Yes. Put it, label it, it would be, uh, if you go with white, uh, Van Forest, uh, Ley Polanco. Uh, 20, what year is it? Uh, 2023. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest part. Time flies. 20, yeah. yeah, 2023. Um, we label it and then we may be able to refer to that game, right? Mm -hmm. And you can say, okay, do you remember what you did here? I mean, you'll crash me for sure. So, <laughs> you remember what you did here and there? Um, and we can refer to it and say properties about the, the chess game. Um, so... Uh, that gives you the, the, the notion, let's say, of the importance of this what is X question. Because as long as we know the game, in this case, yes. the game we, this fictitious, we fictitious, will play, it. Yes. Yes, we will play, we can say things about it. Right. Like, I blundered here, most likely. So, uh, or um, you did um, uh, set a little trap in this other move, or um, whatever. So, um, does this, you know, me disguising as a Platonistic guy, change your um, opinion on, okay, what is the chess game? Or, um... What are your thoughts? So basically you're saying that um, to define a game of chess we need to write it down, kind of. Well, th that would be a particular uh, uh -huh. chess, uh, chess game. Like for instance the, the Opera House game, uh -huh. uh, that Morphy against the Duke, I, for I always forget the name of the Duke and Account, something like that. 1958. Yeah. Um, it's like, like a basic game that we all learn, I suppose, in, in, when you're starting. And then we refer to that game. That game uh -huh. exists somehow, yes. right? Uh, I know the moves by heart of that game, and yeah, we know it. Um, so it is something. That's the. Mm -hmm. We can agree on that at least. For sure. Yeah. So, so it's uh, something that transcends the physical aspect of the game. That's what you mean. Exactly. I mean the the the, the board. If I'm again, I will be in this video defending Platonism, right? Or or of like course. showing my pla uh, Platonism. You're biased. We know. We I know. <laughs> but, but I'm transparent. That's what. That, that's the all one, one person asks. You know, if you're gonna be biased, at least say it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, the board is instrumental in the creation of the game. Mm -hmm. The board could be wooden, could be a glass board. All right. Uh, not very good at glass boards. So. Um, any other material. And the chess game would be the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just thinking about it like... Um... <laughs> a crisis. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll change careers. Yeah. <laughs> no, like... You're not rethinking no, this. Please, um, don't, please don't change. Careers. But if I just play a game of chess in my head and mm -hmm. I can refer to it my 
then I can refer to it myself. It's still. Mm -hmm. But you can share it with me, for instance. You play a chess yeah. game uh, right. with yourself. And then, okay, I want to show you, Chihon, uh, this chess game I just right. played with myself. Yes, then we can refer to it, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You yes. can refer to it. Mm -hmm. So, um, a misleading question would be like, where is that chess game? Uh, why misleading? Because, again, it's number two, again, to, to remove once. the thing from chess, where is number two? Yeah, yeah, no, that is exactly the same kind of thing, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't yeah, exist sure. in it's space and time. just exists in our minds, I guess, sorry. Okay, that's one way of seeing it. Oh, how do you? The other, the, the biased, well, the, biased <laughs> the platonistic way would be like, we access it through our minds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because again, going yes. back to the copyright things, like I do not invent this mathematical formula. Right. I discover it. And then if we forget about the game, it's gone again, no? Uh, it's gone for the humans, but yeah. it doesn't mean Is that it's... Is it still there? Ah, the <laughs> and I, I'm gonna say that's, something. That's about also that. a, a part which I was curious about. Yeah. So it exists, of course it exists, uh, yes. and it's uh, it transcends the physical uh, aspect of right. the game. Yes. But it exists because Jordan is playing it in his head. Mm -hmm. So you you are basically it exists because you are doing it. But if I, if I, uh, if so I there is a, a tiny physical connection to it. And as when you stop doing it and you forget it, it's gone. No, is it gone? It's gone to me. Dun, dun, dun. Is it? I'm delighted that you're. Please, please continue. I will. I will yeah, go no. back a bit because. Uh, the... Well, to me, it's gone. I mean, I cannot find it anymore. Nobody else can mm -hmm. um, find it. But yeah, it's been played at some point in time. Yes. But, but there's no way to. There's no record of it. No. But it has happened. It has happened. Yeah. I bet I have a lot of games like that. Like <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's some jewel, some immortal game that, yeah. <laughs> that will never see the light. Again. Yeah, <laughs> my immortal game. But actually, the thing is, like, I might. Different. I have a lot of. I've played a lot of games which I, of course, forgot about. Right? I don't even know that I can access them anymore. But if someone magically, another person would magically also be familiar with that game, I don't know how. And they would show me the moves, I might still remember the games, even mm -hmm. though I don't know. I do, yeah. so... Can ring the bell, at least. Yeah, like. exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, this is very interesting from the philosophical side. That's why I was smiling, you know, I you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> went back a little bit, because... Uh, one of the main contenders of Platonism would be, uh, would be that which states that all these universal truths or whatever, okay, we create them, and if all humans were to die now, they disappear with us, mm -hmm. these things. Yes, right. that that is the point I was trying to make, but okay, miserably okay. failed. <laughs> no, but but but, but yeah. what what uh, in, like, in which uh, of the context? Let's say, uh, for example, uh, greed. Uh, not we. Let's uh, move away from topic and let's. Mm -hmm. Greed is an abstract, yes. Greed, yes. like yeah. the sin. Yeah, the sin. Okay, okay, okay. So we, uh, it is an abstract, and it exists only because of human nature. When all humans are gone, there's no more. What greed. happens to it? There is no more greed. Right, I would say it's a feature intrinsic to humanity kind of. Thing. Yes, I'm so delighted with it. <laughs> yeah, this is Aristotle, like, like. <laughs> you know, so if high. humanity yeah. disappears, <laughs> greed disappears until some new version of humanity, perhaps with the same features, you know, re re rises. But like we give life to it. Yeah, it, it I would can say be so. Yeah, in, in a no, manner. There's no, least. there's no greed without humanity. There was no greed. Um, before there was life on Earth. Yeah, precisely. So right? that is what I was saying. I'm so decent. you breathe life into that chess game, the particular game which uh, you played against yourself yeah, or you played with Chihon. You are the one who is giving it life. But when when I somehow disappear, or pass away, or anything, the <laughs> mm -hmm. game is gone as well, in a way. You know, if nobody else is familiar with it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that that's one way of of seeing it. Because, uh, for instance, you you put as an example greed, right? Mm -hmm. Greed. Um, I'm not talking that biasedly, you know, <laughs> if that's a word in English, I don't know, biasedly, uh, uh, in this time, but greed is something that it, it is inherent to human beings, right? We, I mean, we may predicate that some animal is being greedy, you know, yeah. like, a, you know, animals that like to store lots of food and, <laughs> and, and at the expense of others or whatever. We may predicate greed out of them, mm -hmm. but in general, we say this out of uh, human beings, right? So, of course, uh, it's like saying human hair. All humans were to die, human hair also is um, it's gone, right? Uh, that's one way of seeing it. But for instance, when talking about the universal truths that you were saying, um, again, E equals MC squared. 
it has a, a, a degree of precision that is astonishing, right? And it's very useful in, in, in physics to, to explain many phenomena. The fact that all humans disappeared, were, or were to disappear at some point, doesn't make E equals MC squared any less true than what it was. It's just that uh, no human yeah. can express it. Yeah, no, exactly. The, the, phys the physical formulas will always stay there, even though that, uh, UV might pass away, no? Yes, so that is where I... that is true. But for uh, a chess game, okay. it's kind of different, yeah? Because a mathematical formula explains the existence, uh, the way in which a certain thing exists. Mm -hmm. E is equal to MC square. I guess it explains the universe. Right. The, mm -hmm. uh, how the universe functions and a lot of aspects of it. And so, even if we all of humans, everything dies, it is still the, it will still be as it is. Yes. But what if the universe ends? Then it's no longer. See, that that <laughs> I, I got scared. Like, <laughs> like, well, well, I've seen some uh, pretty. Will, will I've heard, that still have you seen the universe? <laughs> no, I've heard some pretty good theories that there are probably uh, uh, lo uh, parallel universes. Actually, yeah. 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 So uh, even if our universe. Yeah, because the likelihood of like all these, I don't, I'm not an expert, of course, but of like everything being in this way, it's really uh, astonishing. Like if some values, if the universe would just be slightly different or yeah. would be nothing at all. Yeah, it's true. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. I remember a physicist, I forgot his name, sadly, sorry. Um, he, he, that was claiming to people who were very greedy, you know, or whatever. Like, but what else do you want? You know, the, 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 the remote probability of things having become right. the way they became in, 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 in the history of the universe for us to develop this planet, to create our species that can contemplate this world for a very limited and brief period of time. Yeah. And what else do you want? This couldn't <laughs> be more magical. Like. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in a way, it's, it, it is it like is that. It is magic, no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, I was not expecting to trigger this. Uh, like, sometimes you're like... Ooh, like <laughs> the, the the side effects of philosophy maybe mm -hmm. cheers yeah just water I promise and yeah so um, it's interesting to, to talk about these topics also I have brought in the past like specialists in philosophy that they already know jargon and we discuss in those terms but yeah um, when you Very read noobs, yeah no no but it's, it, it's more it's more valuable than that because for instance Plato's dialogues is always Socrates the proper philosopher let's say but he goes with people in, in Athens uh, and, and try to uh, ask them questions and, and see what, what happens. And from there, you get lots of valuable things. So the fact that, for instance, you're like, okay, I haven't thought of this. Or like, whoa. Or whatever happens when you have this emotion of like the eyes yeah. going like this. like <laughs> <laughs> um, That's philosophical progress. And that's just me, by the way. I'm not quoting anyone willingly. I mean, unknowingly, maybe. I don't know. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, so uh, with this copyright thing, going back to that, that, that topic, this has been polemic at some point in the history of chess, right? Yes. So, uh, Lasker, mm -hmm. in uh, one of his world championship games, as we discussed before. Emmanuel Lasker, yeah. uh, second world chess champion from 1894 to 1921. Yeah, one of the terms of conditions of... Uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You won't beat him in the game, but you'll beat him at facts. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know to, he's uh, the longest standing world yeah. champion of all time. Yeah, I I would have been able to recall that it was somewhere between twenty five to twenty eight years, but twenty six years and yeah. seven months, I think it was. I wouldn't be able to exactly, you know, uh, tell you the years, but uh, so I'll there put you the go. facts when I edit it's the video. Lot. We'll put the facts like on top, yeah. maybe. Uh, so yeah. uh, Lasker wanted his moves copyrighted or yeah, so. One of the terms of conditions for him playing, uh, I think it was a world title match, yes? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Capablanca, the third world chess champion, by the way. Yeah. So, Lasker lost them. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, back in the day, was not as... I, I don't know if nowadays is uh, as professional as we would desire. No, that's, uh, I can ask you later about that. But, um, but back in the day, it was just an agreement between the, the, the two people, almost. Right. And, and they had, okay, these are my conditions. These are my other conditions. And yes, and... Uh, Mostly players did not get any royalties or anything for right. that. So the copyright, it was belonging to the magazines because uh, at that time the, there was no digitalization. Yeah. So chess was propagated through magazines mostly and through papers or something like that. So the publishers of that, they used to get copyrights for the, but not for the game themselves. 
for the annotations yes basically so and the order the way in which they structure the game uh, the structure a lot of games for example a world championship series at that time i think it was 24 games i forgot sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i didn't realize so they can before. publish a, a book on that or a magazine on okay. that and that can be copyrighted so lasco was thinking like wait i am the one who is actually playing the game i, I am the it. one thinking for hours and laboring and coming up with all these uh, novelties yeah. why can't i get something out of it right yeah. so he why, made a why, condition why can you copyright your painting yes. but not your chess game right yes uh, sorry a parenthesis lasker was a mathematician and a philosopher mm -hmm. uh, the guy so he he had these two influences but first of all it's a game played between two yes who, yes but i would say that the level of creativity is simply not enough like when you paint something you're really creating something from nothing but in chess you're doing something within the boundaries of the game you know i don't think that the games are set i mean if anything could be copyrighted maybe it was would be the rules of the game but not the exactly. games exactly yeah. themselves yeah. no yeah whereas if you annotate something then you're actually writing something about the game which could be xyz that is that is something creative right so 